Okay, so now we are ready to export our owl and import it into Blender. So the way we do that is I just grab everything. I'll usually go into my shaded view here. I've got everything named properly based on their layers. Let me make sure my pedestal, pedestal is actually on that layer. This is why I like to use different colors. Um, okay. So select everything. First, we're gonna go into properties or settings, I believe if you've got a, a, a PC or a Mac. Um, and then we go to units and you change it from inches to meters. And this is super important or nothing's gonna work the way you want it to. So then you go, okay. And then we're gonna scale it and get smaller way down there. All right. So once you've scaled it into meters, then we'll go ahead and go to export selected. And the file type we're gonna use is an OBJ. So we'll go OBJ and I'm gonna title it, um, just put it on my desktop. I'm going to title it. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not going to put it on my desktop because I'm going to show you. We got to always try to keep these files and folders very clean. So I'm going to go to my documents. Um, I've got a folder on my, actually, my Mac documents here that I call Blender Files, and I keep everything in here. So let's go to iCloud Documents. And you'll see Blender Projects. Owl, I've already got one there. So um, this is a previous version, and I'm going to make a new one. So I'm going to call it New Folder Owl 3.0 because we're using Blender 3.0. Okay. So now I'm going to go into there, and I'm going to create a new folder in here. And I'm going to call it Owl 3.0 OBJ. And inside here is where I'm going to keep my OBJ. And it's just, you want to always keep your files and folders clean, especially when you're going to be working between programs. So let's tile it owl underscore 3.0 OBJ. And the options should pop up for you. If not, you can click on options. And you want to make sure you just copy my options here. Formatting, map Rhino to Z, uh, to OBJ Y, export material definitions don't really matter because we're not using materials yet. Um, naming, and it's fine format wise, you can use your Mac format, that's okay. Um, and then you wanna make sure you're naming as OBJ objects and layers as OBJ groups. And mesh, um, you can use unmodified, it's fine. Sub demeshing, all of this, just leave it like that, hit okay. And that just said the OBJ dialog box is turned off. Well, that's fine because it is turned off on mine. Okay, and then I hit save. And what'll come up next is this right here, which says, how detailed do you want it to be? And I don't really care. You can do it the more detailed. Sometimes it has overlapping geometry. Just find a sweet spot kind of in the middle there. We're gonna change all this in Blender. Really one of the fun things about Blender is, is, is you're taking these meshes that are more CAD based and you're gonna make them more um, clean for game design and stuff like that too. So um, hit okay, file successfully, export it. All right, now we are ready to go into Blender. So you've downloaded it, you've installed it, when you open Blender, you're going to just do general as your first one. And this is going to function completely different than Rhino, unfortunately. So right click doesn't do the same thing. You know, um, basically orbit, all of that kind of stuff is going to be completely different. So we're going to learn a whole new system here. So if you click your center mouse wheel and move around, of course, you all have a, have a mouse because if you don't have a mouse, you're going to be in trouble. Um, and preferably you've got a keyboard with a numpad, but if you don't, I'll, we'll work around that too. So especially when we're in person in class, it's, you know, your, your laptop doesn't have one, but uh, neither does mine. So most of the demos I'll be doing in class will be uh, uh, using a uh, MacBook Pro. So, okay. So clicking the center mouse moves around. Shift, clicking the center mouse wheel pans our object around. Um, if you zoom way out and you're lost on something, but you've got your object selected, say, you can hit the period on the numpad, 
but if you don't have a numpad, you can just go to select, or wait, view, frame selected. So yeah, this is numpad decimal point, but frame selected, that brings you right to it. And we have lots of objects. You can, um, it, it will be less confusing if you've got like several objects placed around as you're trying to navigate the space. You just click on it and then you go to view, frame selected, F even, view F. Okay, and in Blender you have several modes. You've got object mode, which is for selecting whole objects. Then you've got edit mode, which is for editing the parameters of that object. So if I switch to edit mode, you can see that now I've got vertices and stuff and I can grab with G, G is for grab. So I just hit the G key and move it around, G. And I can also lock in the direction I wanna uh, uh, move it by hitting X, Y, or Z. So if I go Z, it locks it up. If I go Y, it locks it over this way. And X, it locks it over this way for moving. So edit mode is actually for modifying your meshes. And meshes are basically what we're using to uh, 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 as primitive objects to manipulate. But we're not gonna be doing much modeling in Blender, you'll see. Um, and if you wanna get more into Blender, this is gonna be a good primer for really understanding where everything is and then Modeling isn't going to be that much more complicated. Uh, so getting used to the user interface, I think, is the, the most complicated thing people deal with with Blender that they get really intimidated by because there's all these different modes and stuff. But we're going to be using object mode and edit mode mostly, and then we'll get into uh, painting and stuff like that. So keeping it in layout, we can switch it over to modeling as well. And then if you want to switch between object mode and edit mode, you just hit tab, and you can see it changes to object mode. And tab, uh, object mode is great, G for grab. I can move the whole box around, move the whole object around. And again, I can use X to lock it in the X direction, Y to lock the movement in the Y direction, and Z to lock it in the Z direction. Other things that we've got on here, we've got our camera. This is actually set up for what we're going to be rendering. So as we're de uh, dealing with uh, rendering the model, um, we're going to have this camera pointed where we want it to, and we can change the size of it, the F stops on it, the, um, the 35 millimeter, all that kind of stuff. And then we've got lighting. And right now, this light is set up as a, a single light bulb. Um, but if we look at the properties here, it's a point light, sunlight, spotlight, area light, different types of lights here. Right now, it's just a point light. And that's like a light bulb versus the sun. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about getting this thing dialed in, especially those of you who have a nicer computer. Um, you're going to want to set up your uh, rendering mode to use your GPU instead of your CPU. If you've got a MacBook, most likely this is already set up automatically out of the gate by default. Uh, but for those of you who have a PC with a nice uh, RTX graphics card or something in there, you want to go into File, and you want to go to, oh, wait, maybe Edit. Preferences, yes, edit preferences. And then you want to, um, oh, where is it? Interface, themes, no, 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 no. System, there we go, sorry, system. <laughs> uh, system, and you wanna change uh, your, your default to have it actually um, related to what your, your better processor is. So I've got my, um, my Tiddly GT, uh, GeForce RTX 3080 on here, which is of course obviously way better than my Intel i9. Um, so I've got that selected here. So I'm using CUDA. I've got my NVIDIA GeForce GPU set up here, and that's going to uh, allow things to run a lot smoother and render a lot quicker. Um, also, once you do have that selected and set up, you are going to need to go over here onto this panel here. And this panel is all your modifiers, how you control your world, all of that kind of stuff. And I know this is a lot of stuff to learn, but the good news is, is this user interface is actually pretty similar to what you'll be dealing with later on um, if you are going to be using the Unreal Engine as well. So um, over here, you've got um, your uh, properties. So if I click on an object, It'll give you details for, the, for that. This here is your scene, and we are using a rendering engine, and that rendering engine right now is called Eevee. And Eevee is a nice rendering engine for quickness, and if you're using a Mac, you probably just want to leave it on Eevee until the end. 
but Cycles is really the best as far as your rendering engine goes. And with Blender 3.0, we've actually got um, Cycles uh, uh, X, which is something like four times, five times faster. So something that would have taken an hour to render in the past now takes 15 minutes, and that's gonna be great for all y'all um, uh, MacBook users out there. It's gonna take a lot less time. So uh, render engine, switch it to cycles, and then you see under device here, it's set to CPU. If you don't change that to uh, GPU, you're gonna have issues. So change it to GPU compute, and that'll make everything run way, way quicker. Okay, so that's a little housekeeping to make sure that you're all set up right. Um, other stuff before we bring in the owl. Um, you've got, like we said, object mode. You've also got snapping and that kind of stuff, which we won't deal with much. Uh, but then you've got visual styles up here and overlays and stuff. So the most important ones are these ones here. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so if I use this one, we're looking at it in wireframe. If we use this one, we're looking at it in shaded. This one will show the material of the object when one is assigned, and this one will be ray traced, and it should have um, all of the details of the lighting and stuff like that. There's not a lot of details going on in here right now. You'll see later on when we're working with other stuff. Uh, and then you can also use overlays too. So if I have this selected and I go over here, I can go to X-ray and I can see through it. Uh, here, we've also got other overlays that we can add, like if I wanted to show the wireframe on top of it, I could do that as well. So now you see the wireframe, and I can turn that off, on, see the difference, okay. And uh, the, the grid background is also considered an overlay, so you can turn on the wireframe, um, you can change the opacity, all kinds of stuff you can do in there. Also, there's a little toolbar right here. If I click on that, it brings up like transform and any of the modifiers that you might have added. Like I've got 3D print modifier on here, which we might talk about a little bit later. And I've got a quad remesh modifier, which is a, a paid modifier, which uh, turns NURBS based triangulated geometry into quads, which is pretty nice. Um, but that has a, f has a free component to it, but yeah, you end up having to pay for it. So these are some of the modifiers that you, you can add on, add-ons to it, not modifiers, but add-ons you can add on to the, uh, to the program here. So, okay. And then if I click it all the way back that way, it goes that way. And those of you not using a mouse, you've still got op options like pan, zoom. Oh, oh, and this is actually to set your camera view. So, um, you see that camera over here. If I wanted to look at this from the camera, whoop, it goes over there. And your zoom. If I click and hold on that, click and hold on that, I can do that. Okay. And I'm way off again. Decimal point puts me right back. Or again, view F for frame selected. Okay. So that's our user interface. Take a break. Play with it a little bit, click around some buttons, see what's happening. And now what we're gonna do is delete our cube. Then we go to File, and we go to Import, Wavefront OBJ, okay? And let's find it. So mine is gonna be on my Blender programs, which would be under Users, Kmore, Mm, iCloud Drive. Oops. Documents. Blender Project. Owl 3.0. Yeah, so mine's in a complicated location, but yours probably won't be. Okay, so now you see there's our geometry. And we come over here and we want to go to geometry here. And we want to make sure we deselect split by object and select split by group. That's pretty much the only thing we got to make sure we do right um, to have everything import correctly. So now we click on OWL OBJ and import. All right. And our object did not quite import the background the way I want it. Uh, if we look at this in wireframe though, fun fact, we can see that we have the same wireframe we had um, on Rhino, basically. 
except for some issues with this guy. They're a little bit different, but they're fine. So um, since this is not looking the way we want it to, we have a couple of options. And then we look over here on our layers. These are all the objects we've got in, in the scene. And you can see they're titled correctly, which is what we want. We've got that all titled perfectly. Okay. So in object mode, if I select this object and then I switch it over to edit mode, oh, I think I've got more than one selected. So let's go back to object mode. So just this. Why is it? Studios not, ah, I did it wrong. It's weird. There is no studio, so I did it wrong which basically means I just gotta um, undo until I get rid of it. Okay, back to the box here. I'm gonna delete that box. And then I'm gonna go back over to Rhino and fix this. So what happened? And I think I'm gonna actually go ahead and convert this to NURBS. So just go to NURBS like that, and then hit uh, yes to delete input, enter. And so that gives me just this shape right here, okay. And I want to make sure I rename everything properly. I might not have renamed it. So now this should be under properties called studio. Everything looks good here, um, owl body. So, now again, file, export, selected. Let's click on that. I'm gonna repeat what I did before. Options are all the same. This is all sticky, so it should just stay the same. And then okay. Yes, replace it. Okay. All right, now let's try again. It better work or I'll be mad. <laughs> Import, wavefront OBJ, owl, geometry, split by group, import. Yeah, okay, now it's separate, all right. And it's curvy because I made it curvy. So uh, if I go to shaded view, yeah. Because I made it NURBS, uh, it doesn't have the modifier of the, um, of the sub D on it. Sometimes it doesn't transfer correctly when you do that. Let's see if I bring it back here. So it transferred like this instead of like this. Okay, so now we've got all of our different objects all set up, looking nice. What do we wanna do? We wanna make this have cool materials and also um, set up some lighting and stuff like that. So I think first thing we'll do is kind of do some basic lighting. And I've got that point light in here and I'm gonna just delete it. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna delete it. Uh, I'm gonna click on that point light and then I'm gonna come down here and you'll see now you've got a light bulb here. If I click on that, I can change this to an area light, which is gonna make it a little bit more like a, uh, more like a soft box or something you'd use in a studio light, like a rectangle light instead, right? You know what, forget it. I'm actually going to just redo this because if I do a new light, I bring in a new light, it should be a little easier. So the way you do that is right click, or I'm sorry, not right click, object, add, sorry, add, okay. In object mode, add and then we can go to light, and we're gonna to go to area light. And then it just puts it right there. Again, we still do have quite a bit of fall off here, so I can just kind of pull this up. And I believe uh, 10 watts should be enough. Size is fine. Spread, maybe I can change that, All right. Okay. I might just scale up everything. It makes it easier. This is too small. It's like a handheld little little deal. You know, the whole thing is probably 12 inches. So if I grab the whole thing, delete this, and I uh, and I go ahead and go S for scale, and I can I believe I can go like 10 for yeah. We'll do the power of 10. So now um, it's bigger, and that should make things work a little bit better as far as blender goes okay so now let's go ahead and bring in another light add light sorry add light area light okay gz and put it right on top 
And then if we go back into rendered view here, now you can see we got some nice illumination. Okay. <laughs> it's backlit, so it looks like Batman a little bit. So use Y here to move it. So now, yeah, you can see, and I'm using ray traced view here. I would recommend not doing that unless you've got a really, you know, a computer that's capable of handling it or it's working well for you. But rendered view gives you kind of a nice view here. Ray traced view is going to give you the accurate, most accurate view. All right. So now I've got it lit. Let's get into materials. Um, materials are really cool with Blender. And I'm going to start with the most basic ones first. Uh, for example, I'll click on our box here and we'll get into uh, cleaning this box up a little bit and also adding material. So I, I do also want to clean things up a little bit in certain areas. My more organic forms, I'm just going to leave alone. But uh, if I look at this in, um, in uh, wireframe, you can see there's a lot of wireframes going on. If I wanted to, I could clean up this box a little bit and it's going to come in handy like when we're doing um, more architectural stuff later on this modifier. But this is a really crucial modifier for complicated geometry. Uh, and what modifiers are in Blender is it's an opportunity to make objects a little bit cleaner or Boolean things, uh, subtracting things from each other. All of those kinds of things are done with modifiers. And that's this little wrench right here. I click on this wrench, I go to add modifier. I can go to decimate here. And decimate, you have three different options to clean this up. And with geometry like uh, walls that are, that are straight and square, I always just use planar decimate and five degree. And you notice that, that a lot of the striations went away. Very nice. Okay. Um, but that is really nice. I want to next apply it. So I'm in object mode. And you click on this little down arrow and apply it. Okay. And you don't have to apply it. it. Sometimes you make modifiers that make things more complicated and you leave those as modifiers until you export it to another program and then you apply the modifiers. So we'll get into that in more detail later on. But you can also use uh, Decimate on something like this. I wouldn't use it on the owl body because that's really complex and anytime you lower the resolution, you get artifacts. So add modifier, Decimate, Planar, and now you can see how it looks there. And I, a lot of times I'll, I'll, I'll check it out in like ray trace to make sure it still looks good after I'm decimating it. Okay. And then I can go apply. And it still looks good. But it's just going to take up less memory to deal with. Okay. Yeah. There's some holes in it. <sighs> Maybe I won't decimate it. <laughs> Organic forms is sometimes not a good idea to decimate, but yeah, that looks better. I'll just leave it like that. It's fine. Okay, so let's get into materials. So for the basic one, you select it, object mode, materials. By default, it's going to come in with one material here just based off of its export from Rhino. Um, what I want to do is actually tweak some of these settings here. And these settings are going to be very similar to other programs like the Unreal Engine. Um, and for the pedestal, maybe I'm just going to leave it white. So simplest thing, base color, um, and then we'll just make it white like that. Okay. And that's going to change the color of everything because I believe like if you look at the materials for this, it's still got the diffuse. This has got the diffuse. This has got the diffuse. So if you change this material, it's going to change it for everything because that's what it's assigned to is everything. And I'm going to actually retitle it white. just so, and you'll see it's on everything, but we're gonna change those later, okay. So that's the most basic one, changing the color. You can also change how reflective you want it to be, like if I want it to be uh, white, but like super shiny, I can change the roughness here, move the roughness down to there, and you can see now it's super shiny. Um, and when we look at it in ray traced, you can see there's the reflection of the light, you know, there's, everything is super shiny. So that's something that we use a lot is roughness. And I do want it to have a little shine, but not too much. So that's white. All right. Um, other things we can do, uh, perhaps I want the nails. And notice that since these are all on one layer, when I click on it, it selects them all. Um, 
I'm gonna actually subtract out this layer, add a new material, call it new, populates this whole deal, and I'm gonna call it glowy talons. Is it EY for glowy? I don't know, just glowy, whatever. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna make them like a vibrant green, like that. And then I'm gonna come down to emission and I'm gonna change it from black to kind of like this glowy green color. There we go. Fun stuff. And I, again, I am using ray trace view. Uh, most of you keep it in rendered view. You'll still be able to see, but it's not gonna crash your computer. But most of the time I'm gonna leave it in ray traced because, because I can. Um, all right, so next I want to maybe make the beak like glass or something, right? So let's click on the beak. And then I'm going to increase the transmission. Oh, wait, no. First, got to get rid of this one, add a new one, and call it glass beak. And then I'm going to, again, increase the transmission. Change the color, and maybe I'll make it kind of like a greenish tone. Lower the roughness. It kind of gives you that glassy feel. Okay. All right. Let's do something kind of similar with the eyes, but we're using green, so let's switch it up, move to maybe a dark red here. Let's go to a new color, get rid of this one. And we will now go to new. Let's go red, transmission, roughness. Cool. Eyes, minus, new. I'm just gonna kind of play with these a little bit, and that's fine. And then I'm gonna make these, uh, maybe have some sort of other color to it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Again, I'm doing that wrong. Minus plus new brows. And I'm gonna get to doing some, some cooler stuff in a minute here, but let's, we're just gonna play with the basics for first. So I don't think quitting is gonna. Cool, and I'm actually gonna increase the roughness, make them super matte. All right. And then I actually want to maybe even try, um, let's put some uh, gothic eyes going on here. So let's do some black eyeliner. All right, add, I'll minus this out. New, go black. And turn my roughness all the way up. So it's super matte. Okay, looking kind of punk rock now. All right, next let's get into the feet. And the feet, I might even want to, um, you know, and you can play with, there's all kinds of other modifiers. You can add hair and stuff to it. Like, feel free to Google stuff like this. You know, um, you can get as creative as you want with it. There's really a lot of interesting stuff you can do with the uh, materials that I'm not going to play with too much. Um, the feet, I might actually go ahead and go up into UV editing up here. Let's 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 get a little crazy here. Go into UV editing, um, and then I'm going to hit my decimal point again. Remember, it's under View F if you want to lock in on it. And then I'm going to switch this to that okay and we're going to now do what's called uv unwrapping so i'm going to create a new uv map and because this object is relatively small this is an okay size 1024 by 1024 we always keep it square we always keep it the way we want if it needed to be more detailed we could du uh, double this always double the the size is what you want black is fine all that looks good hit okay and then we're gonna come up here and go object, or no, 
switch to edit mode. Edit mode. Make sure A, the whole thing is selected. A selects all. So A, everything is selected. And we're going to do a new UV map here. So uh, go UV and Smart UV Project. Click on that. And then the only thing we really want to make sure we do here is increase the island margin a little bit. 0 0.0001 maybe. Let's see what that does and go OK. All right. So this is our UV map. Basically, it's like, you know, if you've ever had one of those candies at Christmas that are in chocolate and they're wrapped in foil and the foil has the, the material on it. You know, it's not my idea. This is somebody else who said that, but uh, it's a good way of visualizing it. So, it, you know, like this is actually going to be what you're mapping the texture onto. And really you should make these better, like by creating seams in the objects so that they unwrap in a nicer way. Um, but smart UV project is fine for what we're doing for the most part. If you were going to be hired by somebody, you would create seams, which would be like where the object unwraps from. So like maybe creating a seam around the top of the object so that you've got the whole top here as one UV map and then the bottom is one UV map. It makes things a lot nicer. So the UV map is a flat version of the materials. Perfect. So when we draw or color on this, it will, it will be related to this map. Now this map is again, like I said, kind of funky, <laughs> but, uh, it, it, you'll see what happens when we start to paint on it. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to Texture Paint and we're going to go to New, 1024 by 1024, and we're going to create a new texture. Okay. Call it uh, Owl Feet. Image, save, put it in my folder here, save image. And then we need to assign it as a material over here. So go switching back over to object mode here. So we've got it selected, go to material, and then we're going to remove this material and create a new material, title it owl feet. And then what we're gonna do is under the base color here, I'm gonna click right here and do an image texture, all right? And then I'm going to open an image texture, go to the image I saved and open it. All right. So that gives me my image texture. And now we can go back to, uh, to texture paint. And now when I color on this, you'll see it colors on the parts related to this object based on the UV here. So let's go ahead and, uh, man, let's see, control, Z, undo. Okay. Um, and actually what I wanna do here is I, I wanna isolate this. So I'm gonna go to object mode again, click on the object, just the feet. And then I'm going to uh, invert the selection. So I believe that's, I? Oh, no, it's control I, control I. Yeah, control I and then H. Okay, cool. So now that just gives me this object. And if I click on it and do my decimal point in the num selection, I can do uh, select, view the frame selected object. Okay, so now I'm just going to be texture painting on this. Okay, so back to texture paint. And there are all kinds of brushes and stuff that you can use with the texture paint. Uh, where are they? Right here, if you click on brushes, you've got your color. I can change this to make it, you know, like a bluish kind of tone. Um, opacity, the radius of our, of our brush. I can lower it way down if I want it to be small and just kind of color it a little bit on the front.
And the cleaner your UV maps are, the, the better this is gonna work too. So you might have to like go back and touch up stuff. But again, like I said, it, we, we're, we're not gonna get too deep into the UV mapping. I mean, any one of these things is a career unto itself, basically. So um, I'm just gonna kind of color these like this. And then come over here and I might clean it up by just painting some of the areas black again that I'm getting bleed over. And what's happening is, is just how close, and if I move the, if I redid the UV map and I made the island spacing better, I wouldn't get as many artifacts either. Remember when we did the UV unwrapping, um, smart UV project, I had this set at 0 0.001. If I change that and make it even smaller or, or larger, the gap there, that overlap will be less likely to happen. Yeah, it's, it's not really working the way I want it to. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again, because this, uh, this is not working. So I'm gonna go new, 1024 by 1024, go over, switch back to edit mode, UV, smart UV project, and I wanna change the spacing to 0 0.01 this time, so I don't get any bleed when I'm painting over it. Hit okay, Oops, A. 0 0.01, okay. So that spacing is gonna make it easier for the painting so that they don't get overlapping when I'm painting the, uh, the, the vertex. Okay, so now I'm gonna save this image, view, image, save as, owl feet, PNG, save. Come back over to our materials window. Um, and then I'm going to delete this one. Boom. Oh, wait, I'm gonna switch to object mode to delete. Delete, new. Click on this and go to image texture and go to open, owl feet, PNG, open. Okay. So now with the new UV map, there's more distance between our, our paint and it shouldn't bleed over into other sections. So let's go ahead and switch back to texture paint again. And I'm just gonna use this blue again. Much, much cleaner, right? Cool, so it's a lot of fun. You can do a lot of stuff in here, play around with it all you want. Uh, you can smear, smear. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna do that though. <laughs> um, and then of course you can always come back over here and play with the roughness as well. I can make it nice and shiny. And then once it's all done, and see, this is actually not the right, it's not showing what we got. That's our, that's our, uh, our UV map with the painting on it. I'm painting it. You can see it's going on to there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and bring back all of our hidden geometry. So I believe that is control H or alt H. Let's see. Switch back to object mode. Go, yeah, Alt H brings back. Okay, cool. So, image with a little star here means it's not saved yet. So, we need to go image star and save. So, that's going to apply this to our object. If we were to switch over to ray trace mode, we wouldn't have seen the, the application of it yet. So, um, now it's applied. So, we've got that saved. It's applied to the image. The image is on the material. The material is on the feet. And we are ready to rock and roll with other parts. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to this time use the owl body. So it was Alt H to, to bring it back. And then it's Control I to invert selection, H to hide. And now we've got just our owl here. And then we're going to, this is saved. There's no star here. So I can close that, do a new one. 1024 by 1024, I'm gonna call it Owl Head. Go okay. And then go to Object. Oh, sorry, Tab. A, to select everything. And this is the UV map that came in imported from Rhino, which, yeah, there's a little bit of funkiness to it, but at the same time, I kinda like it. 
because uh, if I do a smart UV project here, watch what it does. I think I hopefully can undo this, but it puts it all over the place like this. So if I undo, now I've got it pretty easily lined up. And this would actually be good if I wanted to use an image or something like that because it's completely flat. It created a seam on the two sides here, which is working really well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and export this UV layout. And I'm gonna go back to my owl here and I'm gonna call this owl head. And sometimes it comes out better than Rhino, from Rhino because Rhino is actually using the, it's where it was created. It's not guessing and doing math to figure it out. It's, it did the math uh, in the other program. So we've got this all nice. Let's go ahead and assign it to the material. So white here, edit mode, no. Object mode, yes. Minus to get rid of white. New, base color is an image texture. Image texture is going to be open. And we're gonna go back to our recents, owl head, open image, and it's black. Okay. And then I'm gonna, I've got, this is owl head over here, back to edit mode, and you can see it's right there. And then I'm gonna to go to texture paint. All right. Okay, so, I gotta remember to take it out of ray trace mode when I'm messing with it. So let's go back over here to this mode, making sure, because then you can see what we're painting. All right. And if I wanted to change the color, like of the whole thing, I can fill it just using that. And then I can come back on top and use a brush and maybe I'll do, let's do a smaller brush and go like straight on it here and just go. And let's rotate around. Go right like that. And then let's go to a top view and just make sure we And then let's do this, uh, ro reduce down the softness of the roughness here, make it nice and shiny, image, and save. And now when we go back over to Ray Traced, we'll see it. Okay. So that's texture painting. Um, it's a lot of fun, a lot of stuff you can do with it. And let's go ahead and bring back our model. So we do Alt-H. in object mode, object mode, alt H, okay. All right, our owl is looking pretty cool. Last thing we've got to do is the chest. So I'm gonna select the chest in object mode, and then I'm gonna close this out, which it's saved, always make sure it's saved, close it out, and then we go new, okay. And then tab brings up this, and we've got bit of problems here. So while this stuff is actually pretty good, the whole bottom part of, of this area is a little bit funky. So I can go control I to invert selection and then H to hide. Oops, not tab. Control I, H. Okay. And then tab back, A to select it. And I can actually just modify this. This is all the bottom of the owl, which you're not even gonna see. So if I wanted to keep this, cause I like the way this is lined up, I can modify this uh, UV map and keep it. Select faces right here, UV selection mode. So I'm selecting these faces and like right where the dots are is kind of where you want to select. Shift click, I'm just grabbing all these.
try to get them all. <laughs> it's finished. Yeah. And then S for scale. So I just grabbed all those faces and I'm S for scaling it, G moving it. All right, so you don't want overlapping <laughs> UV maps basically. Um, so I just changed this. I don't even know exactly where this was. on this object, but I don't think this part matters much. So I just scaled this down so I can keep this the same because I'm going to try to texture map something using this as an image. So um, let's do that now. Uh, let's go ahead and go UV, export UV layout, and then we go to right here, owl chest, PNG, export layout. And then we open up Photoshop. Say I wanted to do something like this. And then control C, control V. And then file. Save as. I'll just save it, whatever. Or wait, I gotta flatten it first. Sorry, flatten. Back to Blender. Let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, so now we've got back to object mode here. Select our object, remove this, new, base color, and I'm going to do an image texture, open, back here, owl chest, open. You can see there it is, and how it lines up with our object. Okay, so now we're in object mode, so we can go... Alt H to bring everything back. And you can see we've got the image on the chest. All right, let's go back to modeling view here. And I'm gonna play a little bit with this material some. Let's bring the roughness down a little bit. Maybe even Bump up the emission a little bit on it. Or wait, no, that sorry, that's white. So I'm making the background glow now. I don't want to do that. Uh, okay. That, and then pump up the emission a little bit on this. A little bit, not much. And then I can even make this have like just the texture of, of that shape too. So if I go back to my Photoshop here and switch this out, making sure that, um, yeah, we're in RGB mode. If you got to make sure mode wise image mode, you've got RGB selected here, but then you can go to uh, ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. Filter, 3D, generate normal map. And this is going to do something kind of fun. So you see normal map here has like that gridded kind of cool texture to it. And I can flip it. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. So then I'm going to save this. And I'll just call it NM for normal map. Save. Okay. 
And now when I go back in here, I'm going to go to um, shading. And this is going to give you all kinds of information. I'm going to get in here with the point here. Um, so this, you can actually see the image is, is put onto here. Um, and if I want, I can just delete it from there and it's gone. Um, and then what we've got here is normal mapping. So these are node based uh, materials and you can get really into detail here as well. Uh, but I'm going to just do one little thing here to show you something cool. So if I go to my normal map and I add a image texture, Let's go texture, image texture, put that here. Notice it's yellow, so this is not going to work yet. And then I got to add. Ah, under vector. I'm like, where is it again? Vector, normal map. Click that. Now you see you got yellow to yellow, purple, to purple, and then we can go open, owl, chest, normal map, open. Now we just have that texture from that scene. And so I can actually come up here to my color and I can change the color to something cool. Let's see. Let's do like more of that kind of turquoise, kind of blue color there. Oh, wait, wrong one, sorry. I gotta do it up here. Like that. And then I can do my roughness down or up or whatever I want. Make it shiny. Yeah, maybe I'll. It's too busy. Let's just do like a um, what color looks good. Maybe something darker. All right. And I do feel like I need to change this. Let's go to materials here, change the browse, bring it down a little bit. Okay, so That'll give us kind of a good idea of what we're looking at, and I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I think it's good. I think we're ready to um, to go ahead and render this, and I think even just the single lighting. We've got the lighting source set up nicely. Um, we've got some cool textures going on. So when we're ready to render, we've got a couple of other settings that we can kind of play with here. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the camera view because that's what's going to render. Camera view, this is gonna be not a good rendering. <laughs> so we switch to camera view here. Uh, what we wanna do with the camera view is, first let's select the, uh, the, the image here by going to here, and then we can go down to view, and camera to view. So lock camera to view, and that allows us to zoom in with the camera and kind of move around and get it looking the way we want. Okay. And then we can play a little bit more uh, with the, our, um, our camera information and stuff. Um, we can go over here to, uh, first click on the camera, click. Uh, tab over to object mode, select the camera, camera comes up right here. And then we can change uh, if you want to make the lens be like wider angle or zoom in or out, 
you know, and it actually changed the, changes it. So like if I zoom out like this, it's a wide angle. And if I get closer to it, it distorts it like it would like a fisheye lens. So I actually like to use for product stuff around 50 millimeter. That's a, a, a nice compression level. Okay. So that's a nice camera range. Then what we want to do is maybe do a little, uh, a little focal blur or something like that. So we can go to depth of field. If I click on this, turn on the depth of field, and I can focus on the object. And I usually focus on the eye. See how it's blurring now? If I click on this, I can go over here and click. And then you can set your f-stop. f2.8 f is going to give you a little focal blur around the background, which will be nice. Good object isolation, just like in photography. Now what we can do next is maybe even play with the aspect ratio some. So if I go here and I want to um, change from camera to render properties, I'm using cycles, I'm using my GPU. Here's where you set your quality. So you've got two different types of renderings. You've got the viewport rendering, which is gonna give you, uh, you can lower the max samples here so that it doesn't go so long. Um, and then here I can blow these up, you know, maybe I'll do 5,000. I don't know what you should do. Uh, we'll see how long this takes for rendering on my computer. You might have to adjust this according to your own uh, processing capability. But the more samples, the more times it's analyzing the light and making the render quality uh, better and better as it's going. So I'm going to do 5,000 there. Um, and then we'll go to the printer here, which is going to be like your page size. My resolution, I'm going to set to 3000 by 1800. And you can see that the size of this is changing as well. I think this all looks pretty good. So, and again, if you wanted to, you can change and make it a little bit more square if you want to get more of the scene in. But think about the aspect ratio of like a computer screen or whatever. And then once you've got it all set the way you want, you go to render up here and you go to render image. And that's when you're ready to go. So um, this is gonna give you your final version. And it's gonna take some time to render out. Um, let me make sure actually, I might've just changed the camera. Set our f-stop again here. Oh, I guess it's set on Alpha. Okay, cool. So here we go. Render and render image. Okay, so this took one minute and 30 seconds um, to do it at 5,000. Uh, this is our final uh, owl render from our uh, Blender uh, project. So there you go. Thank you very much. I hope uh, it was educational.